think the entire alien encounter attraction could just be summed up with, it did not go well. On our spooky season, I wanted to do at least one video where I talked about one of the spooky attractions at Disney. So today I am going to do a history and trivia on the extra terror, ex ex alien encounter. Extra terrestrial alien encounter opened June 20th of 1995 and it closed on October 12th of 2003. So we have just crossed the 20 year mark without alien encounter, which is crazy because it seems like it was just there. It's probably because we've had that other little alien hanging out there for a long time in the interim. But this was well known as one of the like scariest attractions at Disney for good reason. So in the 90s, Michael Eisner, who was CEO of Disney, wanted to kind of appeal to teens a little bit more. I'm thinking he was going after that other park down the road, but he talked with some like young Imagineers and teenagers and they were like, we need like cooler stuff. We wanna have stuff that's like stuff we recognize and things like that. So he's like, hey, George Lucas, my man, come here. Cause they had already done Star Tours. They had done Indiana Jones uh, Epic Stunt Spectacular at Hollywood Studios. They were like, Let's, let's keep it up with these like cool movies and let's make an attraction to Magic Kingdom to kind of keep the older kids involved because Magic Kingdom has always been the like full fr family friendly park. That was harder to say than it should have been. So, you know, Magic Kingdom has the most attractions that are catering and, and geared towards younger audience members. They wanted to try to change that, I guess, in the mid 90s. So they decided, let's go after alien. They wanted it initially to be like a Buzz Lightyear uh, Space Ranger spin kind of situation where you were on the Nostromo and you were, you know, taking down some, some creepy uh, aliens. And George was like, hey Mike, maybe not. Seems, seems a little much for, for Walt Disney World. Like, let's try something else. And Mike was like, no, 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 no. Mike Eisner, he was, he was dead set on this, this alien thing. And they went back and forth, back and forth. Finally, George Lucas and an older set of Imagineers did talk him down and they were like, okay, we're gonna do an alien, but it's not gonna be coming from a movie or a TV show or anything like that. We're gonna go with something completely new, something that doesn't have a movie that is backing it up. It's just a new property that we can bring in these teenagers and get them interested. So as part of the redesign of Tomorrowland, they were going to redo a lot of the space in the early to mid 90s. And they took the attraction that used to be Mission to Mars and they were going to revamp it into this new alien encounter attraction. So the way that it was set up, they, it actually went through a couple of iterations. The first, which like soft opened in 94, there was two pre-shows and a main show, which is how it ended up being when they opened fully. But there was a couple of differences. In the first pre-show, which remained pretty much the same, you would come in and you would be introduced via an alien hostess to the company CEO for Excess. It's this technology company and all the great things that they're doing and we are going to show you in person, people of Earth, this new technology that we have. You go into the next room and that's where they show you a demonstration of what you are going to be experiencing. Now in the second room, you meet Skippy, who's this cute little adorable alien who looked, I mean, he actually looked like an experiment from Lilo and Stitch to me. There's this like cute little interaction and it's funny. And the simulated intelligence robotics animatronic that's in there, you call him Sir. He is doing the testing with Skippy and he's showing you kind of like what to expect because you're going to be transported. They will break you down molecularly, transport your little molecules a la Willy Wonka and Mike TV to a new test tube. So you're gonna see Skippy do that. And then you're gonna go into the main showroom where you go in there and that's the anticipation, but then something goes wrong. However, comma, that is not the attraction that eventually came to be, not entirely. That second room where you meet Sir and Skippy, it was a cute interaction, it was funny. And then you go into this main attraction and it's horrific and it's terrifying and kids are screaming and crying and adults are screaming and crying. We need to adjust this second show piece to kind of better reflect what the actual attraction is so that it's kind of like a last ditch like if you want to bail like this is actually what it's like you can get out so you don't just go in and you're like oh this is fun robots aliens oh look he's adorable what is that what what is that it would be more like oh okay aliens and oh oh this might be a little scary let's let's can we and then you just chicken eggs it out now the first room you still meet the company CEO, 
you meet the alien hostess. Yay, 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 our company is amazing. Let's go in and we're gonna see what we're gonna do. So you go into the second room and you meet Skippy and you meet Sir. It, it doesn't go well for Skippy. Um, Skippy does not have a, like a fun transportation situation. Tr Skippy is molecularized. He is transported, he is fried. His poor little steaming alien corpse shows up in the other test tube and then Sir's like, oh, and here's the really fun thing. You can send him back to how he was before. So let's put him back into molecular form and freeze him up there. So his particles are just hanging out in space above your heads. Isn't that fun? I don't know why we were torturing Skippy. Skippy looks like he had done nothing to anybody. So that's that second room. You see all of this and then you go to experience that yourself. Now in this main show area, it's a theater in the round, theater seats all in a circle, and there's a giant test tube in the middle. And the idea is you're all gonna sit down and they're going to pick one of the audience members, one of the guests, is going to, just like poor Skippy, be broken down into your individual little molecules and transported to this faraway planet to meet with the CEO of Excess. But then he comes in and he says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why would we just bring one of them to meet me when I could just come to them and they could all, you know, witness my greatness and they could all see how wonderful this process is. And so that is now what's gonna happen. He is going to transport to you and he's gonna theoretically show up in this test tube. So you go in, you sit down, you got the big shoulder strengths come down and that's a little weird if you're just expecting a show, like am I being restrained if I'm just watching a show, but okay. So you're sitting there and something goes wrong. I feel like the entire alien encounter attraction could just be summed up with, it did not go well. The technicians that are facilitating this trans transportation of the CEO, they are like, oh, we see something. Like we Something has been intercepted, it must be him. Let's go ahead and, and bring him in. So they drop what they think is the CEO into the test tube. Surprise, surprise, it's an alien. And it's a big winged carnivorous snarling alien. Glass explodes and then they put a force field around him and they say, as long as these beams hold, y'all are good. No worries, everything's fine. Lights go out, beams are not holding. It did not go well. This is where the freaky part of the attraction takes place. It's basically in complete darkness and the seats the restraints that you know you walk in you're like why are these here now we know why they're there because they have binaural sound in each one there you have sound system in every headrest you have misters and air blowers <laughs> why can i not come up with a word for that uh you have things that are going to puff air and mist water at you he's broken out and everyone's freaking out it's completely dark so we bring in a maintenance guy and the maintenance guy is up on the catwalk and he's got his little flashlight and he's going to restore power so that we can hopefully get this thing back in its test tube and send it off from whence it came and, you know, get everyone out of here. Well, the maintenance worker shows, you see, like, his night vision camera. You see, he's looking and he finds the auxiliary power, plugs it back in, and oh gosh, there's the alien. Wouldn't you know it? Snaps him up. Lights go out again and you are splattered with some kind of liquid. We hope it's spit. It's probably not, but maintenance worker, it did not go well. Now you're in the dark again. This thing is banging around. He's, you feel him walking, but you can't see anything. It is pitch black. So you just feel stuff. Your seat is rumbling. He's flapping his wings. He's flying around the room. You feel him breathing down your neck and then you feel spit dripping and drool all over your, your neck and your arms. I mean, you weren't getting like soaked, but there was definite moisture happening. Finally, after a few minutes of this, everyone's screaming to the point where they actually had to rework the ride, like the audio, to give more spacing because they realized that people were screaming so loudly you couldn't hear the audio from the actual like attraction. Because you're supposed to be enjoying this. You're supposed to be hearing things and enjoying it. You couldn't people were screaming so loud so they had to redo some of the audio so that you could hear what they were saying to explain the plot to you. They finally get this creature back in the test tube and just before he explodes they slam this cylinder down, this metal cylinder around to contain him. But they don't contain quite all of him and you again get misted with moisture. So that was Alien Encounter. Sounds like a treat. When this closed, it closed for reasons unknown. 
there was never an official statement as to why the attraction closed. It could be because Stitch was very popular. Lilo and Stitch came out in 2002 and everyone was like, this is great. We can make it a little more family friendly. And it could be that it just ran its course. It could also be that the actor who played the CEO was arrested for doing some very bad things. Um, I'm not going to mention them, but you can look them up. He played the principal on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's who it was. That's all we're going to say about that. So a couple of the fun facts. I know this was more just like a talk through this attraction than it was an actual like history and trivia video, but there are some fun facts about it um, pertaining to the other actors that were present in the in the film portion of the attraction. So the first one that you meet is the hostess, the, the very first alien life form that you see. She walks out and she's very cute. She's very pretty. Um, that's Tyra Banks. It's not her voice. There was a different person doing the voice acting. And then someone you may recognize without me even telling you, I'll show you the picture of her. This was one of the technicians who was responsible for sending the CEO to you. She was one of the ones who was working on that, Dr. Femus. That's Kathy Najimy, which you... Am I saying that right? After I said it out loud, it doesn't sound right. Najimy? Jimmy? You recognize her as Mary from Hocus Pocus. That's who she is. And you probably recognized her without me even telling you that because she's very distinctive facial features and facial expressions that I think even came through in her alien form. And the other fun person who was involved in the production was Tim Curry, sir, the simulated intelligence robotics guy at the beginning who tortured poor Skippy. That was the voice of Tim Curry, who you know as Pennywise from It. He was also Dr. Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror Picture Show, among a gazillion other things. Home Alone, he was in that. That was actually where I saw him first, was Home Alone. Kind of going along with It, the composer who made the music for this attraction was Richard Bellis who was the composer for the original It in 1990. He also did a couple of Disney things. Um, he was involved in the composition for Star Tours and also for Reflections of China in Epcot. So connections there for, for It, which is also good for spooky season. And one fun thing pertaining to the actual cast members at the attraction, very similar to how Muppet Vision 3D has a live animal that comes into the show, the maintenance person was actually played by a live actor, one of the cast members would be the maintenance person. They'd be in the catwalk up above the main room of the attraction and they would have a flashlight and they would be walking and so you're seeing the visuals that are pre-recorded, you know, the night vision camera, but there's actually a person up there with their with their little flashlight and they were like pretending to be this maintenance person who's going to find this auxiliary power and then at the moment where they get attacked they had to cut the the light and they had to, you know, get out of there so that you didn't see them up there anymore. So there was a live actor involved and I think that's pretty cool. Last little fun facts are going to be a couple of Easter eggs. At the very beginning, before the attraction even really starts, when you go into that convention center kind of area and you're waiting for the first pre-show to start, there are advertisements on the walls for like upcoming events. They say things like um, intergalactic stakeholders meetings and there's like an advertisement for uh, dog food because what goes down must not come back up in space. Funny things like that. But there is one that also says Mission to Mars. History or hoax? Paying homage to the fact that that was the attraction that was in that space previously. If you're on the West Coast and you go to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout in uh, California Adventure, you can see another little Easter egg. In the collector's room there is a piece of paper on a desk. It's like a, an invoice and it's from Excess. It's the tiniest little niche Easter egg that you have to really be looking for and even if you see it you may not know what it is unless you were familiar with this attraction but I think it's a fun little little tidbit. But that is it. Those are the facts, history, trivia, discussion, Megan rambling about extraterrestrial alien encounter that was at Magic Kingdom. Let me know if you experienced it down below and what you thought of it because I never got to do it. I've, I've seen it several times on, on YouTube, watch, watch through, but it, that's just a lot of darkness. And I feel like that doesn't really give you the, give you the full experience. So let me know what y'all thought down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.